All right, what's up? Give me a sec to get things. Make sure everything is set up because I kind of just logged, just, just booted into uh, Linux and logged in and everything. So. Yeah. Got to get the stream manager open and all that shit. Oh my god, what the fuck? Okay. Okay. Damn. I uh wasn't using I enabled the stats panel in OBS and it's like, yeah, you're dropping like 40% of your frames. Your frame rate's like 20. Fuck, okay. My bad. Frames missed due to rendering lag. Like, what is it? What is it even rendering? What is it rendering? Oh. Okay, I think we're... And good to go here. Yeah. Post in the usual places. I wonder if uh, I actually ended up matching with what I said when I said I was going to go live. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I had to go make some eggs because I realized I hadn't like had dinner or anything. So Hopefully these eggs are okay. They should be fine. No fun. Uh. Okay. All right, we got a whole one person. Let's keep that going. It is really laggy. Is I is my camera smooth? No. My camera's not smooth either. I don't know why it's so laggy. Like, it should not be this laggy. Oh, my hands are so oily from the eggs. Like, ugh, it's laggy on my screen too. Like, what? What? What is making it laggy? The funny thing is when I go over to the other screen, it's it's not laggy. Oh well, okay. New tweet. Good tweet, Yubiko. Um
Okay. Oh, we have someone. Well, retweet me. I'll put the I'll put the tweet in chat. Then you have to retweet it. Um, I'm not sure if you heard earlier, but is my is my face cam laggy? Because it was laggy before, but that was because apparently there was like some setting that was wrong in OBS. But I think it should be smooth now. But maybe everything, like maybe the stream itself is just laggy in addition to my desktop being laggy. Which would mean that it doesn't really matter, I guess. Egg. I've become quite the pro at eating without getting food on my mic. Okay. Oh shit, BZH opened a bunch of issues. This is cool. Oh, this is in noodles. Okay. So here's what we're doing today. Um, sorry, I'll make this a little bigger. This is the issue. I'll drop it in chat. Um, but. Dude. Turned on Discord. I'm pretty loud too, like if you have the stream on full volume I should be Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, here's the issue. Basically the problem is like Alright, let's just go to the Matrix. Matrix is the best example of this. Okay, so um in Matrix we have this file home server.yaml, right? This is a massive fucking config file, uh which we need in our container, in our matrix, in our synapse container, uh, to run the matrix server. No, I'm not what? Oh, I'm not loud enough. All right, I'm looking at the bars on my screen, and it says I'm pretty loud. So that's, that's all I'm saying. But, um, so this file has a bunch of config, and most of this stuff should be public. I mean, like should be as in we're the OCF so we want as many things to be public as possible. Um, it's like there's no reason that for most of this stuff to be private. Um, oh my god, I'm already losing it. No, I'm not roasting your code. Um, I'm just saying like this, this is a config file and we want to keep as much of our config as public. So this file should be public. The problem is there's various like random secrets embedded in this file. Um, so we want the file to be public, but we don't want these secrets to be public. So we're trying to come up with a way to handle this that like is sort of clear how it works and less less painful than the current system, which is like put the entire file in a private directory somewhere and then mount that entire file over no discord voice chat the problem is if I go in the voice chat it's going to be weirdly delayed for all of you it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense um but maybe maybe Paymo did it. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, let me try this then. Let's just start Discord. Um. Wait. I thought you just told me Asai was being super loud in here. Anyway, um, what the fuck? Let 
Come here, here it is. Okay, what's up? I'm here. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. Um. Well, I wonder if I can share my screen in Discord as well. No. Oh, this setup should be interesting. Yeah, you all are just going to have to be on a delay. Two seconds is not bad, actually. I'm surprised that it's that little. Um, doesn't Kubernetes have secret support? Um, like Kubectl create secret? Yeah, the problem is... Um, so that, that's what we're actually going to build on top of, basically, because the problem is Kubernetes secrets... Uh, like we for this to work with Kubernetes secret, we would have to put this whole file in a secret um, as like string. And so what that would mean is that we would basically create a secret, and then we would. Hmm, let me. Sorry, I did a big explanation of this in the Kubernetes interest group meeting um, the other day, but like, oh, I'm gonna. Uh, Loki's a bad example. Um, okay, I think they do this in Grafana. Maybe give me a sec here. <clears throat> okay, right. So you'd have something like this. So this is a secret in Kubernetes, right? This is what it looks like. And then we can inject our own secrets into this secret, and this this all works fine. Um, the problem is, basically, if you want entire files, this has to be the file name, and then this has to be the entire contents of the file. And there's a way to do it in YAML that is, like, not quite terrible. Like, you can use the pipe operator, so it's like, um, you know, it looks something uh, like this. Um, oh shit, my desktop sounds are going out the wrong speakers. Um, so like uh, file.conf or something like that, and then you would do this. Whoops. You know. This is like, then you have to basically, you have to take the entire file and indent it and match it inside this file. And it just becomes like a complicated mess. Um, basically, this is eventually what we're going to end up doing, but I don't want to have to wrap every file like this in a bunch of additional YAML for no reason. Um, it just makes things a pain in the ass to handle. Um, but that's basically what we're going to do. Like we're going to adapt our script to sort of auto generate this type of file from a more normal file, if that makes sense. Um, or at least that's a plan. Egg. All right. Ah. Uh. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start working on this. Create a new branch. Um, let's see. Kubernetes secret file. Okay. Um, and then in Emacs, connect over to this. Um, utils. Cool. And the file that we want to use is, or that we want to edit, is stiff sas, staff sys OCF Kubernetes deploy. So this is the script that deploys uh, our Kubernetes applications. So normally what this does is like Sam in, um, I don't know, uh, matrix since we're using this. Um, if I deploy this from this directory, 
Normally what it does is it basically goes into the Kubernetes folder and um, ignore these two. They're actually, I just generated these while I was messing around. And then it finds all of these files and um, yeah, actually I'm going to make a new clone because I have a lot of weird stuff in that clone. Uh, OCF matrix, matrix. Oh my god, I can't type. Matrix clean. Okay, so this will just be a clean clone of our matrix config. Right, so in here, oh, you have uh, synapse.yml.erb. And basically, what this does is it just uses this other script called Kubernetes deploy. Oh, yeah, it says up here. Um, creates a namespace based on the app name and then runs Kubernetes deploy. So Kubernetes deploy deploys the actual app. And this is just a wrapper that like sets correct variables and everything like that. Um, you split it recently on RAC and Federation. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, into two, like instead of just synapse.yml.erb, it's split into multiple files. That's fine. Um, but since I'm not actually working on matrix here, I'm working on like the tool itself. I just need like an example app. Um, so this, this should be fine. Um, yeah, because all we're going to do is just make sure that the right thing gets deployed basically. So my idea is basically, let's see, maybe we have to basically def define a directory and inside that directory, it'll just convert any templates into secrets um, by like wrapping them in some YAML and stuff like that. And that's what we're going to do in the Python script. Consideration for multiple template files. What does that mean? You can also talk in in the in Discord. Oh, Discord crashed. Wait, no. Oh no, oh, you're no. still in here. I'm, Discord. Yeah, I'm still here. What do you uh, mean by no. by uh, consideration for multiple template files? Oh no 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 no! I was just saying, just just consider uh, for like different setups, like. Um, Supporting secrets across multiple different templates. I don't know. Mm. Well, Are you... I, I'm not sure how this like final tool will come out to be. So I'm so I'm interested in that part. Yeah, yeah. I guess part of the question is like, do you have multiple? Hmm. Are uh... well, actually I don't I don't know I, I I don't know I was just like yeah. Okay, I guess part of the question is like. You have different files in different, you need to have like different files in different, mounted into different pods, I guess. Mm -hmm. Is that, yes. is that true? Yes, okay. that is, that is true for, yeah, for both the bridge and the server, uh, you'll need different files mounted. Okay. I would guess then that. We're gonna need separate secret resources because otherwise there's just one secret, if that makes sense, and it would just mount everything. Yeah. In there, which seems like a problem. Hmm. Another thing to consider um, is that uh, that same secret file could also be mounted in multiple different pods. Yeah. yeah. You should be able to do that already. And okay. As long as. As long as you have that secret file, you should be able to mount it in as like as many pods as you want. Okay. Um. But. Yeah, the quite. Uh, hmm. The question still remains. How do we want to split it up across like multiple resources? Front, front, right, left. 
Hmm. Right now, kind of what I'm thinking is we have some sort of system like this where it's like make deer. Um, um, secret. I don't know. Secret synapse. And this could create a secret called like templated synapse or something like that. And then you do the same thing for I don't know, secret IRC bridge or like app service IRC or something like that. And then basically each directory would be its own secret. That's my current idea. Hmm. How how do you like maintain so say say if uh, both the bridge and synapse are using uh you know the same secret registration file or yeah in this case uh an IRC registration file needs to oh, be yeah. shared between the two uh, how would you like sync them would you just um I mean you could just create a secret a separate secret like make their secret shared whoops I misspelled mm. that but um. So these names are like actually special anyway. These are just uh yeah. And then you could mount the shared one in both. The only thing is you can only mount like you you would have to put that registration file in another directory. But you I think you can control the location that it loads that from. So I don't think that should be an issue, right? All right. Um. Okay. Let's go ahead and start figuring out what we will need to do this. One question that I want to make, like, make sure, or that I want to, so that I want to verify, I guess, is I don't know if this program will automatically try and recurse into subdirectories and treat those things like Kubernetes YAML. Because if it does, that's a problem. Um, if that makes sense. Because these are subdirectories, like, you know, these are all subdirectories inside here. So if it tries to apply, uh, apply this entire Kubernetes folder, it might try to apply things inside these as well. Um, if so, that's uh, we gotta let me let me just figure out whether or not that's true. So where does it call Kubernetes deploy here? By the way, uh, make sure to ask questions in chat. Um, I may already be losing some people. Uh, so when there's something you hear that you don't know what I'm talking about, please, please be like, what, what the fuck is XYZ? Or like, what do you mean by XYZ? Yeah, they renamed Kubernetes Deploy. It's now called Crane with a K. Which is cool, I guess. Um, so we should update that at some point. Uh, but yeah. Hello, hello. Hessler, good to see you. Okay. So here's what we call Kubernetes deploy. It just takes the bindings and template their. Okay. Hmm. 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 Yeah, they renamed it Crane when it came out with 1.0.0, but we're still on 0 0.31.1 or something, which is like the the last version before 1.0, I think. Um, so let's see, Kubernetes. Deploy dash dash help. I guess I've run this recently. Okay, so templates there. Wait, that's not even listed here. Oh, wait, here it is. Yeah, it's probably recursive. Uh, I could test it, but that sounds complicated, and I am worried I would break something. So let's just look at the GitHub. And uh, see. Really quick. Let me go to the the tag that we use. Hello. Hello, hello, welcome. 
Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, what, what are you doing? Um, so basically, we need a system for uh, trying to create a system. We talked about this a little bit uh, this week at the Kubernetes group, but we're basically creating a system where you can have secret. Yeah, you basically have entire files that then get turned into secret resources in Kubernetes um, with uh, templated values. Um, so like for home server.yaml in matrix that allows us to put the home server.yaml um, in the repository with like uh, with templates with okay. like templated things that are bound by OCF Kubernetes deploy and Kubernetes deploy. And then, you know, those things get bound. Oh, you, yep. you can't make them yeah, so you, I guess you can't make them environment variables. It has to be in the file. Um, yeah, yeah. It, the idea is like, there. I mean, this isn't true for everything, but like there are a lot of cases where the you can't really break these things out of the config file. Like it's in the same config file as a bunch of other stuff that should be public. And yeah. putting that all in the private share kind of sucks. Um, like that's what we're doing right now for like IRC logger. It's what we would have to do for a bunch of stuff in matrix like synapse and the irc bridge it's what we have to do like jaw just opened a pr to do this in the lounge because now it has to have a shared password for web irc yeah. like there's a bunch of different basically areas where this is causing problems so i mean i it actually it might be possible if you if you do want to try to sidestep this entirely i think you can like split up the kubernetes or not the you can split up the synapse config into like multiple files so you can have like one file that that lives in the puppet share and then I, you can kind of import it. I thought there wasn't a way to do that, but if there uh, is, then that would definitely also be a solution that maybe we should do. I mean, I still think this would be a good thing to do in the long term, but like maybe that would resolve the immediate issue with with Matrix. I well, couldn't I mean, find a way to do that, but maybe I just didn't find the right thing. Yeah, I mean, like otherwise, it's it's weird because then what you would have if you really have to have a file and you want you want to template the file so it's in GitHub, but like you omit the uh, the secrets is that like inside kubernetes i guess the entire secret file would be a secret and then you are you are creating the secret from jenkins i guess yeah basically um, yeah and then jenkins jenkins does the substitution and then it uploads the secret yeah to kubernetes. and then you can mount the secret as uh, yeah. a volume right that's fine. Yeah, no, we should. Have, you're right. We should have a system that can. Um. Okay. Yeah. You know. Then don't worry about stuff accepting it. <laughs> better. Probably better to have this. But well, I'm gonna look it up anyways. Oh no, you can't. Yeah. Never mind. Yeah, you have to do. Okay, so even before they renamed it to Crane, it was actually Crane under the hood, and then Kubernetes Deploy is just a wrapper, uh -oh. Oh. which is kind of scary. Well, they have a migration guide, and we should probably uh, follow that. Yeah, we should do that. I I kind of want to just do this first and then do that. Uh, well, but let's see if they I don't know. Like, if, if there are new features, then we should take advantage. Okay. Default template well, there. I don't know. I don't know. No, do, 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 don't listen to me. Template dir from STDN. What? Wait, so then where do the secrets come from? Then? Like, what, where do they live? Do they live, they live in Hira? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, well, they live in the same place that they live for everything else right now. They live in, you know, like, YAML files in the private share. Yeah, so it's it's Hira. Yeah, I mean it's not technically Hira. Like they aren't variables. They're loaded by OCF Kubernetes deploy. They're not loaded by um, anything in Puppet. Well, I mean, the, okay, whatever. I'll, well, I guess we'll. Hey, DKS. Whoa. Turn your mic up. I can barely hear your ass in the stream. Oh, that was shit. <laughs> no, you're not. 
<laughs> you're not very loud. Okay, fine. I'll turn up my mic, but you're you're super loud. You gotta turn yourself down. <laughs> you. <laughs> How the fuck do I do this? All right, I, I'll, also I'll also turn you up. Turn you up on the. Yeah, you got a base boost. Base boost. Base boost. All right, maybe that's better. I, that's I also better. my oh, mic I has a bunch of like. Cus- bunch of oh my god, you're, god, you're echoing. Is this better? Uh, yeah. I I turned you up, so I can't I, tell. I but you're up. echoing everything I say now, which is a problem. Oh fuck. Um. Wait. Okay. Now now do. Okay. Hello. Okay. Hello. Yeah, yeah, it's still echoing. No, I'm talking. It's still echoing? Okay, I'll just put on headphones. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I have a bunch of stuff so that my mic is also louder on the stream that won't apply to your mic, so uh, that may be... Uh... Your mic is buttery smooth. Thanks, thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. They they do all this processing that like isn't documented. You know, maybe we should just upgrade to Crane because at least then we'll have like up to date documentation. Hmm. Let's see. Let's just see what that would look like. Like, what do we actually have to do to migrate? Oh shit! You got a first time viewer. Hello, iPhone fan five. What is up? What is up? Welcome to the stream. Are you associated with uh, OCF or are you just kind of browsing around um, uh, browsing around Trip Twitch looking for cool things to, to watch? Okay. Let's see. Migration. Check out our migration guide. Perfect. This is what we need. TLDR. Command line interface was redesigned. Well, fuck. Uh, there are breaking changes in the public APIs. Um, random guy trying to learn Python. Cool. Glad to have you. Uh, we're a little sidetracked right now, so I can't claim that we're doing a whole lot of Pythoning immediately, but eventually the goal is to upgrade this Python script. Um, but yeah, we're not really there yet. Um, it turns out that there are sort of a lot of problems in our way. The goal is basically, uh, we're trying to, this script uh, is what we use to deploy applications into our Kubernetes cluster, which then run. And uh, we just want to add some features to automatically deploy some secrets uh, better. But the problem is that the tool that we're using has updated, and so uh, we should we we want to upgrade. So, like, if you look in the Python script, uh, the the final thing we do is this, which literally just calls this uh, program like as if you ran it on the command line. Um, but problem is, uh, this has been renamed and redesigned, and we should upgrade to the new version. Um, so I'm going to try and do this. Hopefully it won't take too long, but who knows? I didn't do the, a lot of the work in setting this up in the first place, so I don't entirely know what it entails. So, okay. CLI was redesigned, breaking changes in the public API. Okay, we don't use the public API because it's Ruby, LOL. Imagine writing code in Ruby. My first big project was a Rails app. Yeah. Um, stats, the metrics, I don't even know what this means. Crane deploy now considers all namespace resources eligible for pruning, including custom resources. See blacklist exceptions. This seems fine. I don't think we really use any I guess it'll uh, I guess I guess we don't really have like random resources lying around for the most part inside the namespaces like I'm pretty sure we sh every this should be fine like it should be able to Yeah, I don't think this will cause problems for us. We're going to use deploy now crane deploy. 
deploy task can no longer deploy global non-namespace root. Oh, this is a problem. I'm pretty sure we do this in a few places. A new command called crane global deploy and a related class called global deploy task were added to replace that feature. This is a problem for us because we just indiscriminately deploy the entire Kubernetes directory, but now we somehow have to split up things that are um, namespaced and things that are not namespaced. So I'm not sure how to do that. Um, crane deploy will not render ERB templates. Use crane render. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. So this is actually going to take a lot more work than I want. No, we 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 specify the namespace. We specify the namespace, but there's a few cases where, like, so for instance, in, well, I'm pretty sure there are a few cases where we deploy globally namespaced resources. Like, um, I want to say we do it in Loki because we have to deploy, deploy like a pod security context or something like that. Although that might be namespaced. What the fuck? I think there are a few places where we deploy things that are actually global resources. Um, well, then we, I'm not sure. we should, um, we should put them in puppet and, um, take them out of the repo. No, that's kind of a good point, actually. Because it's yeah. like, I don't yeah. know, it's like global. I'm fine with Things that, Things yeah. that are global for the cluster kind of don't belong in the repos. They belong as part of, like, the general cluster configuration. Yeah, yeah. All right, sorry. Let me catch up on chat here. I can't even get Docker to run on my own Windows PC. Kubernetes is several levels above my skill level. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Kubernetes only really makes sense if you're working at a big company or if you're like us and want to just like learn a bunch of weird shit and yeah there are a lot of it <laughs> i i'm using arch linux there's a lot of advantages to running on linux docker runs natively <laughs> you don't have to worry about fucking running like it, whenever you run docker on windows or a mac it basically creates a linux vm and then does everything inside of that which is kind of scary um so it's a lot nicer to work with on linux but um yeah, if I was uh, to recommend anything as far Arch as that, Linux, though, right? specifically Arch. No, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna shill Arch. Um, I'll shill Arch. It's the best system. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, honestly, install Linux. It's a great experience. Um, oh shit! You write COBOL? Wow. Wait, aren't you in like high in demand right now? <laughs> I thought that Damn. I saw this article that like COBOL programmers like are desperately in need and they'll pay you a lot of money. Like. Don't waste your time on Docker. <laughs> Take money and get a comfy government job writing COBOL. That's kind of true. Am I a professional dev? No, I'm actually, well, right. not currently. Um, I'm still at uh, college. I mean, as much as you can call it at college right now. Um, I mean, everything is online. So it's like we, we may as well not be going to school. I'm not learning anything this semester. But that's a separate issue. Um, but the stuff that I'm working on right now is for the open computing facility at UC Berkeley. Um, so we're, there's a link in, um, underneath this, this stream and like the info section, but we're a totally volunteer student run organization, but we run a bunch of services that students on UC Berkeley campus can use basically. Um, yeah. Yeah. Berkeley Berkeley has a has a pretty good CS program. Yeah, it's uh there's a lot of I honestly like there are definitely problems with the CS program, but yeah, there's a lot there's definitely a lot of smart people there, um including all of the people except me in this club. Um uh which is means that we get to work with some pretty cool stuff. Um I think you're looking for EECS EEX. Technically there are two programs. There's EEX, uh which is electrical engineering and computer science, which is run by the engineering department. And then there's LNS CS, which stands for Letters and Science, uh, Computer Science. So Letters and Science is like a different college from the engineering college. So it's like a more, it's less focused on like electrical engineering and computer engineering and more focused on like, I don't know, there's not a big difference. Basically, you just, you don't have to take signals if you take, <laughs> if you're an LNS CS and like all that shit, uh, which is, sounds good to me. So that's what I'm in. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh. yeah i don't know i 
I'm not really a hardware person. So yeah, like electrical engineering just doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me, I guess. Um like I'm gonna work on the computer and hope I'm and pray that the hardware that I'm working on works. And if it doesn't, I will be sad, but I will not know how to fix it, and I'm kind of okay with that. Um so I'm very comfortable working entirely in software. So that yeah, you know, I'm I'm fine doing the the LNS uh track instead of the X track. But the rhythm game controllers, yeah. I can't I don't know how to build my own rhythm game controller or my own keyboard or whatever the fuck, but that's okay. Does it have more math? Maybe? I used to be a math major, so I already I didn't even know what the math requirements were because I kind of already satisfied all of them. But I don't think there's no difference. That's okay. Yeah, I honestly don't know what the difference is, but um, Sienna would know. Um, she is X and I'm LNS. Yes, so yeah, I don't know what the difference is entirely, but they're pretty. They're quite similar, actually. Um, yeah okay honestly like looking at this i kind of don't want to upgrade now that i look at it like i kind of want to put that off until later and focus on what we were originally going to do because this is going to be a fucking pain in the ass like this is <laughs> this changes a lot of stuff um but at the same time this change the crane render crane deploy dash dash stv and thing could actually be quite helpful to us um, because it might allow us to render these files separately instead of like if if this does so okay basically the question is like does crane render um require you to be using valid kubernetes yaml or will it just like basically render any erb file um if it's the latter then I'll look into the upgrade because it will actually make what we're trying to do a little bit easier. But if it's the former, then I'm like, we'll do this another day because this is this is a much bigger change than I thought it was initially. Um, okay, so let's look at what Crane Render does. Must be great at programming logic as a math major. Uh, I I mean, if I'm great at programming logic, I think it's just because I've done a lot of programming. Honestly, like. I don't think there's a whole lot of trans skill transfer between math and computer science. Um, like, I really like math, but especially once you get to higher level math, like, I don't know that there's a lot of difference. Because honestly, the the most valuable skills, especially as a programmer, are all just like knowing how to do things, if that makes any sense. So, like, I don't know. I don't know that math helps all that much, to be honest. Um, unless you're doing like, you know, once you get into like machine learning, uh, I mean, machine learning is basically just like statistics on a computer with a lot of data. Um, so knowing math is helpful there. But like for this kind of stuff, like math is kind of useless in my opinion. Um, uh, would you like to comment to the stream about your favorite thing about machine learning? Uh. I, I can't come up with a witty answer. So, no, I don't know. What's your favorite thing about machine learning? Oh, it's it's saving the world. Oh yeah, okay, that's definitely true. Okay, crane render. This is what I want. Um, <laughs> oh fuck, it's just a link to farther down on the page. Okay, so. Crane Render is a tool for rendering ERB templates to raw Kubernetes YAML. It's used for outputting YAML that can be parsed into other tools. Crane Render does not require... It doesn't answer my question. Oh, what is this? Crane supposed composing templates from several parts of the duplication of Kubernetes file. Da 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 da. Yo, this is some holy shit. 
Some complicated shit right here. All right, let's just install Crane and uh, see what's going on. I'm just going to do this on my laptop because um, I don't want to fuck up the cluster accidentally. Oh, fuck. That's not what I want. There we go. Uh, there's some cool stuff in machine learning, to be completely fair. Um, uh, I think I wasn't here when you probably announced the stream. But what is it that you're doing? Uh... So, uh, I'll link the issue in chat again, but, um, the idea is basically we have all of these files in, that end up that we want in Kubernetes applications, uh, that are like mostly config. And then it has one or two secrets in it. And, uh, it kind of sucks to put the entire final file in like the puppet private chair just because of that. Um, so I'm sort of trying to create a system where we can uh, template those files and have that template in the Git repository and then OCF Kubernetes deploy knows how to turn that into um, Kubernetes secret resources that we can then volume out into the containers. Instead of the current system where we just have to put the entire config file. Yeah, into yeah, yeah. that here. sounds pretty good. Uh, Find and replace Kubernetes deploy with crane render. LOL, I wish. Uh, deal with the L's later. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know how well that will work. Uh, yes, I'm a student at UC Berkeley right now. Um, as much as you can be a student right now, which is to say not very much, but uh, technically, yes. Crane run. Dude, there's all this crazy stuff. We should actually use this like for, well, whatever. Whenever we have to do like database migrations and stuff, we shouldn't do our current system, which is just like exact random shit in a container because it sucks. But okay, uh, gem install crane. Is this how you install this? How much you want to bet there's an AUR package for this? Wait, because I have used crane. Outside of uh, outside of this, yeah, install crane. Okay. You see, how much of this stuff is new? Like that wasn't in the original OCF Kubernetes or the original Kubernetes deploy. That is that is very true. Like I'm honestly surprised that this kind of stuff, where it watches the deployment and and rolls things back if it doesn't work, I'm very surprised that there isn't something like that built into Kubernetes itself. Um, because right now, if, if you're using Kubernetes and you say like, "Oh, I want to deploy this app onto Kubernetes," Kubernetes goes, "Okay, we'll work on that," and then just like disappears. And if it fails, the only way that you can service that information is by checking on the status of that application. Um, which makes sense if you think about kubernetes as a declarative system because you basically declare that something exists and then it works to make that a reality um but the fact that there's no way to do it synchronously is like kind of weird i don't know uh this is slow my ruby setup on this computer is also shit, so i i think i have to like add something to my path every time i want to so like the, the other thing that it can do is that it can restart services and it can like run arbitrary things. Uh, like I figure like it like we used to have um used to be able to restart services from IRC bot with when we had Marathon and right, we can't right. do it anymore. But like we would use Crane for that also if we wanted to bring it back. I see. I mean yeah, right now what we do is just delete all the pods and wait for them to restart, which is not great. Um, okay. No, it's, that's actually fine. But it's just like, like if we were to like formalize that or like have like a procedure like this is how you restart, um, or like I don't know, like if we wanted to make it more formal, like we would use. Okay. Um, like. Yeah, like if we wanted the, something like the old system. Well, but I like my idea was like in bigger brain, which was that I thought we should get like 
source hut builds or something like like source hut builds. And then what it what we would do is when you did the create restart whatever, it would send a build to source hut builds that was like restart, and then you could click on that. Like the IRC bot would like give you the link to the build, and then you could like see the logs, and like it would tell you if it succeeded or not. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Although we're not going to move to Source Hut in the near future. Bad. Um, but yeah, I heard there was. Or recent... I don't know. It doesn't have to be that. It can just be like anything that like any system for like running shit and then showing us the log. Yeah, I think that's the best way. To I mean, it. that's. Wait, why? Why doesn't Jenkins work for that? Like, you could maybe rig Jenkins to do it, but like. Jenkins has like a more of a concept of like a project and like what project would this be under like how how would you trigger it I don't I, I feel like with Jenkins it would be like a lot more complicated because everything with Jenkins is complicated but like you it's I theoretically see. possible I'm sure I see I see okay so yeah this is kind of what I thought um it it does make sure that the thing you're actually rendering is Kubernetes valid Kubernetes YAML so we're not going to upgrade to this. Um, we'll do this some other time. I do have Kubernetes installed, right? Oh, I don't. Wait, how did it know it was not? Well, in any case, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're not going to upgrade right now. Uh, and I'm going to, so going back to what originally started this off, I'm going to assume that these files that it, it does recursively do things in this directory so here's basically the plan um okay so basically like we have this kubernetes folder which is straight kubernetes yaml um and then we're going to create a secrets folder as well and then in here you can do things like so what we'll do is move home server.yaml into here well actually we have to make a subdirectory synapse so synapse is the name of the secret and then in here uh, yeah wait no what home server okay yeah and then rename this. Okay. Yeah. So then it looks. Okay. And then, like, let's see, where is the secret? So then this, we get rid of this, uh, and we say instead. registration secret or something like this why did it do that um oh, let me copy down these names so i have them for later uh Macaroon secret key. Form secret. Cool. And let's copy that, these down too. These are all just totally random values. So um, when I'm testing this, I will just substitute random values. Okay. Why is hostname filet? I don't know, man. I was like, I'm going to come up with a host name. I came up with Filet. I, I don't know why. Uh, why does brevity come at the price of my sanity? Oh, YAML is bad. Why does brevity come at the price of my sanity? Yeah, YAML is bad. OK, so basically, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we want to do a transformation where we uh, 
read in this entire file and basically create a file that looks like this. Uh, where this stuff is the contents of this file, um, but indented in however much we need to. Um, so that, that's, that's what our Python is going to do. And ideally, we don't have to write this out to a file, but I think we do. So what we'll do is Uh, so the idea is basically we create this, um, this secrets directory inside Kubernetes and, uh, OCF Kubernetes deploy will, if there are these secret resources that need to be created, it'll, it'll dump, um, them into this folder because, and we tell Git to ignore everything in this folder, right? Um, so that we don't accidentally check these into the repository. Not that they will actually have the secrets themselves in them, um, but these files should be auto-generated from other parts, um, other things in the repository, so like we shouldn't, we shouldn't have them checked in. Um, of course, the secrets themselves will only be added um, by the OCF Kubernetes deploy script later in that script. Um, yeah. In fact, we can even tell it to like clean out this, this directory every time after it uses it. So maybe we don't even need the directory to exist in Git at all um, because we just delete it as soon as we're finished deploying. Seems a little bit nasty though because it's really easy for that to accidentally get left over and then checked in. So I don't know. If you have thoughts on that, put them in the chat. But let's get to editing this file. So now we're actually onto the main Python thing. Okay. So how does this file work? Oh geez, my my LDoc is big. Okay. Cool. So the first thing it does is create. So the first thing it does here is it creates the Kubernetes namespace. Um, that's fine. Um, and then here, loads bindings. No, no, no. It just creates the bindings uh, from the app version. So, so the first thing it does is, okay. So basically bindings, these are the variables that get added into the, right? So if you, sorry, if you look at this file, like this version corresponds to like this uh, key in the dict here. So basically, every every key in this dict corresponds to a possible uh, what's the word? Corresponds to a variable we can use in the ERB, basically, right? Um, so we don't need to change this stuff at all. But the question, but we may want to uh holy shit my brain is not working sorry um yes yeah, so we don't need to change this stuff at all but we might need to i don't know whether or not to put the stuff we're going to add before this or after it probably before because we shouldn't be using these bindings at all um for um, for creating these secret resource files. Um, so, yeah, and then what does this do? This loads secrets into the bindings array. So this updates the binding array with any secrets in the secrets file. Um, and then it creates a temporary file for the bindings. Um, okay. Cool. I wonder if templates there, we can specify multiple, uh, multiple directories. Let's see. Let's see. 
let's go back to this um, and read the readme a little bit. Um, usage. Temple server. Hmm. So maybe instead we can create like this star here. Uh, makes me think that we're able to pa like, especially if we use this STDN thing. Like, if it's able to like sort of read the directory from the input, maybe it can read multiple directories. Um, alpha feature dash f paths accepts a comma separated list of directories and or file names to specify the set of directories files that will be used. What? Okay. So the reason I'm interested in this is because if we can specify multiple files, that also means that we could, for instance, create a temporary directory, create our re or Kubernetes secrets resources in there, and then just load those in addition to our normal, um, like our normal resources. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to try that approach. So let's look at how... So I guess we need to wrap this in another with... with temp file dot... Uh, what are... That's the only option there. Okay. Temp file dot... Temporary directory. Hmm. This is a function. I don't know why one is a function and the other is a class. Seems a little weird. I should probably just look at the actual uh, documentation instead of trying to autocomplete my way through this. Okay. Temp file Python. What the? What just happened? I can type. Okay. I think this is just the auto completion thing being confused. Okay. With tempfile dot and temporary directory. We don't care about the as secrets secret resource there. Okay. Um and then we want to move all of this inside this. This says created with 600 firms. But I don't actually see that. Is that just the default? The file, okay. So name temporary file, it says function operates exactly as temporary file does except that the file is guaranteed to have a visible name on in the file system uh, as opposed to somehow creating a file that doesn't isn't linked anywhere in the file system is that possible
Mm, okay, I see. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Rewrite, rewrite in Rust. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know about that one. <laughs> um. Okay. The directory name can be retrieved from the name attribute of the returned object. When the returned object is used as a context manager, the name will be assigned to the target as the, wait, the name will be assigned to the target of the as clause in the with statement if there is one. Okay. Um, there are none. So I got a little sidetracked here, but, um, you know, just like we're doing this. So I think in this case, this is actually literally the directory name. Um, Drop in replacement for Python. I'm not so sure about that, but perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> I wish. Yeah, no. Um, no, uh, we use we use Python for everything because everybody at Berkeley knows Python, so just keeps things easy. Um. This file-like object can be used in a with statement. Right. Okay. Yeah, so in this case, I'm pretty sure it literally sets the name. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, okay. Yeah, I did want to just, Actually, sorry. Your temp file would probably be safer in Rust. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure this would all be safer in Rust, but I don't, like, there isn't anything... Like the the file that we should be worried about security wise is the one that has the bindings because that'll have the secrets. This file is literally it's just oh, dude, basically I, I just, just wrapping kidding. some stuff and I, I... <laughs> <laughs> I mean yeah. Like yeah, I don't know, I, there I, could I've be some concern. Out. What are you doing? We're what? Tuning out. Oh yeah. it's I'm trying to figure out Python, basically at this point. I'm a little bit concerned what are you using here. Temporary file for? Uh well we have to write our wrapped file resource somewhere so that um kubernetes so that kubernetes deploy knows how to read it in wait are when you, you writing in that part? parser of that format or no because you had no, showed I'm... that file format which file format i don't like the one where the secrets are going did you like like this you thing showed that and then did those secrets get put into the kubernetes the, like, secrets files or what yeah basically Oh, so you're writing a parser thingy? No, it, I mean, it doesn't parse anything. It literally just, like, indents things and then, like, puts some stuff at the beginning. No, no. Uh, like, it, it just creates a YAML file, basically. Um, but it's, like, templating. It's not really doing any parsing. Uh, everyone at any given high school knows Python 2. Uh, wait, AP Computer Science is Python now? Bruh. Sorry, I, I didn't know that that was a thing. I thought it was still uh, all in Java. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Python. For little scripts like this, it's, it can, it's really effective, to be honest. Um, for big projects, I'm skeptical. I mean, we've been dealing a lot with Synapse lately at OCF, and that uses Python, and that's it's fucking terrible. Um, it's, like, super slow. And Dude, that code base is a nightmare. Yeah, it's, nightmare. it's, it's not good. Um, so yeah, Jake says, hi, he's chirping. Hi, Jake. Imagine having APs. Import YAML. YAML is already imported, actually, because we had to parse another YAML file in this, in this directory. Okay, so I wanted to briefly check on this. The mode parameter defaults to W plus B. This is fine. The, the thing I'm concerned about is, do we actually make sure that the file permissions are locked down like if you just do let me just test this on my my laptop but if you do temp file dot direct temporary director or uh sorry temp file dot named temporary file this thing does it well, like what permissions does it have uh import temp file uh,
Okay, it is 600. I guess that's why the comment is here. It's just... <laughs> I don't know why this isn't like documented in Python anywhere, but... Yeah, this makes sense. Maybe that's the default of make tempter or make make temp make make temp like the underlying uh like libc or whatever function. Anyway. Uh okay. With temp file temporary directory as secret resource there. Um so now we need to get all of the subdirectories. Um Okay. So if was dot path dot well actually hold on. What does this do? Get Kubernetes there. Hmm. I'm gonna generalize this function because I wanna do the same thing but put secret here instead. Um, so let's just say, instead of get Kubernetes do get git top level their their name um and then here this is their name get kubernetes there and then here this is get git top level dir kubernetes and over here we're gonna do the same thing um Secret template there equals this. Uh, and this is secrets, I think is what we called it. Uh, this is down here. Yeah, secrets. Um, if uh, okay. os.path dot is der secret template der oh oh jeez chat popping okay my uh my high school had apcs but at the time it was they didn't have a python option it was still only java not like just my high school didn't like that was the only option um for APCS. Yeah. Um but I did go to a fancy school. Um because the problem is it was the school it was it was the professor's kids school because like everybody from Purdue, uh all the like professors and every and people who worked at Purdue, like that's the school that all of their kids went to, so yeah. It was like all the smart kids. Um Okay, so if this is a directory, we want to get all the subdirectories. Um, let's see, how do you do that in Python? Python get list directories. Oh, it's that lister. Perfect. Python 2. Fuck. Okay, here we go. So I wonder if there's a way to only get directories. This is an arbitrary order and does not include special entries even if they're present in the directory. That may be a path-like object. Yada, yada, yada. Right, this is fine. Okay. Okay, so then we want to do os.list um, secret templates templates equals os.list dear we uh hmm. okay. I guess this we just do this like this secret template. Dir. 
for her in yeah secrets and secret templates or I don't know oh my god there's just so many nested like loops here if we need to make sure this is a directory secret template okay now we want to get all of the ERB files and convert them into our other thing, uh, our, our whatchamacallums. Um, okay. Uh, so to do that, we have to load each one into memory. So what I'm going to do is create a dict here, and the dict is going to each basically have the On the left, the, the keys in the dict are going to be the file names and the values are going to be the uh, values of the files. Um, and then this is basically what we will use to create our templated... Oh, geez. Hmm. Well, okay, let's, let's just start by doing that. Um, so, let's see. Secrets equal use a dict comprehension. Should I do it? I feel like this will be kind of nasty with a dict comprehension. It doesn't um, matter. We have to do a lot of checks on the inside. Do the dict comprehension. <laughs> do the dict comprehension. You gotta do it. Uh, okay. Let's think about how to do this then. Um, name colon. How do we get Python? Get file contents, I guess. I'm glad I'm not the only one that codes in Python this way. Oh, just Google everything? Yeah. Every single fucking time? Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I, I don't know how to do anything. Oh yeah, this is standard. Wait, are you just trying to slurp the contents of a file? Yeah. Yeah, just do open file name dot read. Okay. You can do it in one line. Easy. That's what I like to hear. So the dict comprehension will work. Name open. Yeah. Name, so then like dot yeah. read, and this well, will just read out the code. entire file. Oh oh wait, but the stream is. Wait, doesn't that just leave the file descriptions open? No, it'll get garbage collected. Um, <laughs> yeah, it gets garbage collected. Oh, I thought you had to yeah, use width. Dot strip. You don't have to do use the strip. width for this. Wait, why do I want to dot strip it? Because like, if there's a new line in it. But oh, there, wait, there will mind. be new lines, and I want to keep them. Wait. Oh. Although okay, I fine. should. Yeah, uh... yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. I want to encode this. Sorry, I wasn't. This will read it in as bytes, right? No, it won't. Oh, what it the? Wait, how is the default gotta... not fucking bytes? That's wild. You do, um, so for, in the open command, or in the open function, you have to do comma, um, rb, I think. That's wild. I am very surprised that's not the default, to be honest. But anyway. Uh, yeah, that's a little weird, but, you know. Okay, let's I just... Uh... I think it's RB, yeah. There you got it. Sorry, the stream is delayed, so I'm... Yeah, no worries. Now that I'm thinking about it, all of this stuff we can do before we create the template file. So I'm actually going to move all of this... Whoops. Out here. Well... We can, but idea, let, we should probably just be writing these out as we load them. Okay, so the one other complicated thing is we only want to look at files that end in .erb. 
So we can probably just add a filter onto this did comprehension. Python string and ends with, is that a thing? What the fuck? Wait, you can do just dot ends with? Amazing. Either dot ends with or like something similar to that. You can definitely do that. <laughs> Dude, Python is so easy. Honestly, why do we ever just, why do we ever use any other language? The best okay. Like, yes, is like Python, but like everything about it is better. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just try this, but abort like here. This is what I'm going to do. I just want to like make sure all of this is working so far. So I'm going to try running this. The copy of the script that I'm working on is located here. Uh, Wait, why is it asking for my password? Oh, oh, that's fine. Wait, secrets file not found. Um, okay. Uh, actually, hold on. I'm just gonna mock this for now because I don't actually. Okay, this is better. Type error none type object is not iterable. Okay, so I guess we have to put something in this file. Uh, we'll just use these are the things that we need to eventually put in the file, so we may as well just do this. Wait, will your script protect against this and send a nice error message? Uh, well, this is an existing bug in the script. I mean, it's not even really a bug. You can tell it's trying to load the file, and I mean, yeah, it would be better to handle this more gracefully, but I don't really care. Okay, it didn't do anything. So, uh, my guess is that this something here failed, so we're going to do some nice printf debugging here. Okay, so the problem is os.path.isdir is failing. Oh, and the reason is that it's just using the uh, end of the name. It's not using the full path, so yeah, yeah. Damn. Quite a story in the chat. Sorry, I haven't been keeping up there. So I think what we can do here is we just need to create another variable that basically is the full... Uh, yeah, let's call this like... I don't know. Uh, 
uh, these. Okay. Sorry, these names are not great. os.path.join secret template dir subdir. This just overwrites the name with its like fucking ugh, whatever. It, it basically prepends the full path. Oh, but we actually need to keep the name. Hmm. Secret name. Subder. Secret name. Oh, it's not path. That is there. Subder. Then uh, for name in. Oh, we have to do list there. Subder here. And then here we have to join it again. Uh, I don't I don't know about this uh, this 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 comprehension here. I'm mm -hmm, mm -hmm. looking kind of grody. Okay, I think it works. This is all this, this this is this entire fucking file, but yeah, okay, so it gets home server.yaml.erb. Um and it's this. So here's what we want to do now. Now we want to create the actual Well, let's also just check that this uh works with some other cases. Okay, so we should get home server uh, dot keys. So here uh, we should get, oh my God. We should get uh, home server dot yaml and home server two dot yaml, but Home server three, since it doesn't end at dot ERB, should get discarded. Um, at least that's the idea. So let's see. Okay, yeah, perfect. Uh, get rid of my debug statements here. Um, and then here we need to write out the actual file. So I was going to just use, hmm. Hmm. okay, so I'm going to create a separate function for this because this can get kind of complicated. In fact, actually, maybe we should just build, break this entire thing out, but um, Um, file name secrets. Okay, so here secrets is the the dict that we've created, and then file name is the the file name in the um in the temporary directory that we want. Cool. Secrets file not found. Wait, why does it say secrets file not found? Hmm. Still seems to be working. Oh, it's because I'm running it in the wrong directory. Well, anyway, uh, okay. If I do this, it will work. Yeah, so it doesn't say that now. And this is all just debugging stuff that I got rid of. Okay. Uh, cool. So this function, basically what we're going to do is let's 
let's see. So basically it looks like this. And then for each individual thing, it looks like this. So if you have multiple files, you know, it'll look like this. So I'm basically just gonna do these as separate things. So name, we do some similar stuff. There's, uh, I don't remember where we do this. There's a way to sort of like make this slightly less painful. Um, we use it in emails, I think. Mail report. Where is the report? Um, the like report problem script. I think that uses a, a nice. Sort of template system. Send problem report. That's what I'm looking for. ocflib.misc.mail. Okay, ocf.io slash gh ocflib, ocflib miscmail.py. Perfect. Hmm. So I think I was getting a little bit confused actually because I think the, that that part isn't the part that I care about, but it uses this dent thing that's from the text wrap package. So let's look at that. I think that will be useful. Python text wrap. Because we have to deal with indentation here, basically. Um, wrap, fill. Dent. Okay, the thing is, I want indent, not dent. Hmm. Okay, I guess we can use dent and actually use it to indent. But it seems a little sketchy. Let's see if there's a better way to do this. Fucking classic. Wait, what? Did I just not scroll down long enough? Oh, wait, this is Python 2. Fuck. Oh, yeah, okay, perfect. Perfect. Per <coughs> oh, perfect. Perfect. Ah. Okay. Uh. Okay, create, clip that. Okay, so... Cool, so basically... Wait... The optional predicate can be used to control which lines are indented. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, let's 
Oh, Discord crashed. Sorry, people. If you're trying to talk to me, it's not gonna. It's not gonna work. Um. Sorry, Discord crashed, so I got disconnected. It's apologies if you're trying to say something. Uh, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Storing data secret template. Whoops. We can just use dot format for all these strings. I'm not using f strings because this has to be compatible with Python 3.5. Uh, cause that's what we have on all of these machines. Uh, yeah. Rip discord. Rip, 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 rip. Imagine mirroring discord to IRC. Imagine doing that. Wait, but that happened though. Precisely. Okay. Okay. String data, um, equals string data. Secret. So first of all, uh, join. See, I wonder if maybe we can do it like this. Maybe we don't even bring data secret template dot format name equals file name. equals file name value equals uh con contents dot I indent. Low key thought a stranger was actually calling me out on oh Vio's muted us. Never mind. Oh, I have Cooper C. Oh, yes. I muted you the whole time. You're That's live all. on the stream, by the way. And you're also echoing, unfortunately. Uh, okay, cool. Two spaces. You know what? This is Pythonic. Uh, and this is for file. How do you uh, hmm. list comprehension from dict? Oh god, oh iter items, that's what I want. Okay. Or File name contents in secrets dot iter items. I need to import indent as well. A B C D F G H I J. Or wait. Oh wait, no, no, it's text wrap, not indent. Fuck. Okay. Uh. Text wrap. Okay, so this is text wrap dot indent, and the first thing is the text, and the second thing is the prefix. Perfect. Okay. Imagine using string manipulation to write YAML. Yeah, this is kind of it's a little hacky. Not gonna lie, it's a little hacky. Um, but I think it'll work. So this basically should create the string data, and then we just need to uh, YAML contents equals uh, what did I call this? Secret resource template dot format, and then we just use the string data. String data equals string data. Beautiful. Once we have this, we can write it to the file. How do you do that? Uh, open, just going to guess here, file name. 
write dot write yaml contents I don't know how I like I re-enabled eh. all right let's assume this works it probably doesn't but um let's assume it does then what we want to do here is just oh wait we have to provide the uh we need to template the name here too uh name uh yeah let's just put this up dir file dir name secrets okay here name equals name string data equals string data open os dot path dot join file their name easy as fucking cake it definitely doesn't work but you know whatever did i did i make any stupid errors did anyone catch anything okay and then here we just want to call oh fuck what did i call this right secret resource right secret resource uh filder is the secret resource whoops secret resource there um the name is the let's see secret name and the secrets is secrets okay cool let's see what happens if we run this dict attribute dict object has no attribute error items okay i got bamboozled here python iter items is this like collections something hmm iter items oh this is why is this always <laughs> okay iter items okay that's not a thing anymore items iter items python 3 it's already in google so you know it's it's good Okay, do I just want items here then? Okay, I think I just want items instead of iter items. Item. Iter items. Items. Wait, actually, maybe I can just do. Uh, let's just see. Maybe I can just do this. I don't think so, though. No. Because it'll just iterate through keys if you do that. Okay. Uh, wait, I have no way to know if it works because it cleans up the directory. How do I tell it to not clean up the directory? Uh, let's just do this instead. Uh, okay, we're almost there. This needs to be indented. The new line, the, the extra new lines look kind of ugly, but I'm too lazy to actually fix that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay, and the other things we have to trim off the .erb here so let's just create another variable for that well we don't really need another variable okay python probably has a way to do this i don't want trim i don't want to trim white space Trim substring. Hmm. 
Hmm. Alright, I'm just gonna use. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So here's where we want to do this, actually. Uh, let's see. Is that right? Let's see. Python 3. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, dot, E, R, B. Colon minus 4. Perfect. Right? Okay, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Perfect. It feels a little sketchy, but, you know, that's fine. Um, and then the other thing is... The secret name here should have dot yaml dot erb. Okay, let's uh oh and the indent thing, right? Okay, here string data we have to indent this. Text wrap dot indent string data two spaces. All right, look at this fucking beautiful code. That was sarcasm, by the way. Oh, I'm boosted. I just want to delete the things inside the... All right, okay. So now we have this. This is normally what would be in our test directory. Um, but, or in our temp directory, but the problem is the temp directory gets cleaned up. So we don't actually want to use that because we want to be able to make sure that it's writing the right things and the script is exiting. Okay. Dot erb dot erb dot erb dot erb dot erb. No, this should, no, no. If it's dot erb dot erb, if it's erb dot erb dot erb dot erb dot erb, it should be. It should just become erb dot erb dot erb dot erb. Split join. Ah, yes, I see we're into programming in Python. Oop. Roast your screen. I can't be bothered to keep his own code looking good. Hey, you know, like I'm, 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 I'm putting new lines in here, right? Like, there's a trailing comma here, you know. This 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 thing is we're 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 wrapping at a reasonable length here. Not using pathlib. I mean, do I really need to use pathlib for this? I mean, it's like fucking. Eh. Eh. Oh shit! What's up, Keela? I just saw you. You still here? Yeah, Guido would be proud of my trailing comma, okay, Vio? Okay, uh, and then let's make sure the file actually looks good. Okay. 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 Yeah, I think this is good. I think this is good. Oh my god, this file is still fucking big. Okay, home server 2. Yeah, same same deal. Okay, I think this is fine. We'll go to the end of the file real quick. So long, dude. Oh my god. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, perfect. Um Cool. Yeah, I'm happy with this then. Uh so now what we need to do is let's switch this back to use the secret resource there. Get rid of the exit here. So this, we should probably factor this out. It's kind of, 
Nah, fuck it. We'll think about that later. Let's get it working first. Um, so the other thing here is we want to run this. We want to change this so that it does this. And then it reads from SCDN. So how do we std in sub process Python? The thing is, I don't actually want SCDN. I just want to give it some text that it sends to SCDN. Uh, for SCDN line in characters in the info, we can order to the server. Except text mode is not used. They will be open as binary streams. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think I understand this text thing. It seems like this is what we want, but I don't understand how it works. So let's go back to the top. Uh, the input argument is passed to popen.communicate and thus to the processes, subprocess SCD, and if used, it must be byte sequence or a string if encoding or errors is specified or text is true. Um, okay. Okay, here's what we can, yeah. So this, we, we just need to uh, use this input thing. And then we can do text is equal true, I guess. Or maybe we should just encode it. We should probably just encode it. Okay, so right input. That's all we care about here. Okay, so subprocess.run is our command, and then we just do input equals. It's highlighting that. I don't like that. Oh well, I guess it is what it is. Uh, well. And what's the secret resource there? Okay. Uh, no, I fucking let's test this. Actually, let's just let's just test this. Let's test it. I don't. This is pissing me off, though. Sorry. It's going to be like that. Rip Discord. Oh, fuck. It crashed again. Okay. Kira, remember when you were like, yo, you should use Discord Canary because if you use normal Discord, it's always so behind. I didn't know that I was going to sign me up for it crashing like every 15 minutes. So, uh, I don't want to overwrite important things. So the one other thing I'm going to do here is, whoops, what the fuck? Delete all the important things from this file. Uh, well, we can leave this, I guess. This, this should be harmless because it's namespaced anyway. Uh, everything else, uh, let's just delete it. Uh, don't risk it. Okay. So now we do our OCF Kubernetes deploy, and let's see what happens. All right.
Oh, fuck. Wait. Uh, crap. I guess this is reading this HP you're kind of echoing a little. Um, that's okay. Um, I guess this is... What? Hold on. Did I just totally misread the docs here? I totally misread the docs here. Okay. Oh. Wait, this is annoying. Uh okay. Fuck. So the problem is if we're gonna use SCDN, what that means is that we have to It's not enough to just hmm. I, I thought that this was passing in a list of files over SCDN, but it's passing in the actual files themselves. Which is like a lot more complicated. So maybe we can just maybe we should just write these out to a directory. Because hmm. otherwise we're gonna have to like do some annoying stuff to get this to work. Like we're either gonna have to read all of these files into memory or we're going to have to do some crazy stream magic that I don't want to have to deal with. Um, so I don't know. I'm sorry Wayland sucks. Wayland on Arch. I don't know what... I don't think that was... I don't, I don't think it was a... I don't think it was a Wayland problem that Discord crashed. I don't know, whatever. Um, I guess we should also rename the script to OCF Crane. Yeah, I guess. If you're very control, but don't you just love sitting in the Discord of muted mics for the aesthetic, aka life IRL. Something like that. Everything is a Wayland problem. It's actually an NVIDIA problem. Wayland would work great if NVIDIA wasn't a piece of shit. Wait, so I don't understand why it's like accepting a list of like file names. And like uh... So if you look at the documentation basically what we were doing is before is passing passing in um the directory name t for the mm -hmm. template their argument mm -hmm. um and so my idea oh, was are you, oh, are you, go ahead uh, are, you, are you looking at template there or the dot dash f yeah we have to use template there because dash f doesn't read templates it reads like literal yaml um but we mm -hmm. still need these to be templates because that's how the secrets are going to get injected i see So yeah. Doesn't it support both, though? At least that's what I'm interpreting from the documentation. I don't know what you mean by that. Oh. Uh, oh. oh hmm. Set environment instead. Set the deploy door. That's so misleading. I don't. I don't understand. Like. I mean, it makes sense. The thing is, it says cat. Uh, so it says where is it? Right. You're it says like cat all these like star.yaml and then template there <laughs> equals dash and i just i i guess i just read this as echo instead of cat and i was like oh you're providing a list of file names over scdn but no you're providing the actual like template yaml itself so okay. nvidia drivers for the win fuck no
And I'm very happy to say that uh, it's the exception rather than the rule. And I'm also happy to very publicly point out that NVIDIA has been one of the worst trouble spot we've had with hardware manufacturers. And that is really sad because NVIDIA tries to sell chips, a lot of chips into the Android market. And NVIDIA has been the single worst company we've ever dealt with. So NVIDIA, fuck you. <laughs> Thank you to friends there. <laughs> A classic. So I want to. Uh, uh, yeah, I was hoping. I was thinking like maybe if there's an easy way to like. Oh, did Discord crash again? No, so I, um, if there's an easy way to sort of like concatenate file streams, then you could just. Uh, basically write your own implementation of this, if that makes sense. But there's not really a good way of doing this without buffering everything in memory manually. Yeah, I'm not, no. Yep, uh, we're just gonna dump it in the directory, in the Kubernetes directory. And uh, yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, so, okay, we need to rework a bunch of this stuff then. So get rid of this line. All of this stuff can be de-indented. Right. We don't need to provide the secret resource dir here because it's always going to write these in the same place. Um, and that place is. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, get get top level dir, get get top level dir Kubernetes, Kubernetes, and then we're joining secrets onto here. If this file does not exist, I I wonder if there's a way to actually specify the location of the temporary directory. If we could do that, then that would be nice, but I feel like probably not. Dir. Wait. What does dir mean? Oh my god. Oh, dir is just the parent. Fucking okay. That's not. That's not helpful. That's not what we want. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to create the file if it doesn't exist. Actually, we're just going to delete the file, delete the directory, Python delete directory recursively, rm tree. Python rm tree. Ah. Uh, I have to import something new. Okay, well. 
Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, well. Uh, here's what we can do. Full dot rn3 filder. Uh, camera stream. Yeah, my last one had a camera too, I think. Maybe the one before that. Not a camera before, but yeah. Okay, so we're going to delete the file if it exists and then recreate it as an empty Python create directory. Ethan, if you're here, you can probably help me instead of having to Google every single fucking thing. Makers. Python maker. Maker. Okay. I don't need recursive. So, or at least I shouldn't. If if I if I'm doing something recursively, if I'm doing recursively, something is wrong. Oh, it's thought maker. File there. Okay. Ooh, this is fine. Um, and then the one other thing is we can. In here we should uh, do this. You have to ignore. Easy enough. Oh, but the problem with this is that. This runs differently for each secret resource, so we actually have to do this outside. Okay, well, I guess it's easier then to just pass this in anyway. Been like two hours. I did like fucking four hours the other day when I was working on I don't even remember what I think it was like matrix stuff. Or I don't know. That's that was a long stream. It crashed like three times in the middle. Um create directory. Uh yeah, I mean we should just It's a little scary, but it's probably fine. I mean, don't put your... Eh, uh, whatever. Let's give this a better name. And by a better name, I mean a less likely to be used name. Fuck. Pair in the 
secret resource. Okay. This is like slightly less bad now. Yeah, so we're reverting back to sort of our original idea here. Uh, all right, well, let's just try this then. Oh, wait, I need to undo all the changes I did here. Why no trailing comma? Uh, okay. Try this. Wait, what line is this? 144. Da, 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 da. Okay, nothing secret name. What the fuck? What? Oh. I'm boosted. Commas. Fucking hard. Cats. They do be like that. Oh, I gotta import Shootle. What's the canonical way of pronouncing this module? If it's not shootle, I'm going to be disappointed. shootle is annoying and boring. No such file or directory. That's why I created it. I see. So we need a, we need the arm tree to fail silently if uh, it's already gone. Maybe shuttle? Shuttle? That's boring. So I don't want to just do ignore errors here because like there might be some errors we care about. Uh, whatever. I'm just going to do ignore errors. True. Um, like if 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 there's act if it's like actually permissions denied or something, then like we do kind of care about that. Oh, hold on. But, uh, you know, usually it's just going to be. I mean, the thing is, like, if we can't remove it, that's it's kind of OK. SH util. Or, sh yeah, that's sad. I'm disappointed. Oh, wait, it's no, oh, I'm dumb. It's it's waiting for input um, because it's still trying to read from the file name here. All right, this needs to be uh, plus get get top level dir Kubernetes. Okay, All right, like it was originally. Okay, this is looking good so far. Oh shit! Oh wait, it didn't create the serve. Wait, what? Wait, are you telling me it's not recursive after all this bullshit? Alright, we're gonna wait till it finishes and, and look at what happened. <sighs> Actually. All right, clean matrix, matrix clean. Wait, did it, what did it, what the hell? Where did it write this stuff? Gen secrets there. Oh, I changed the wrong thing. Fuck. When I changed this, uh, sorry. When I changed this, I meant to change the other one. Okay, that's what I want. Yeah, this is not going to work because the service doesn't have anything to bind to, but that's fine. Okay, fuck, it still didn't work. Did I save? I saved. <laughs> uh, 
Hold on, are you telling me it doesn't recurse? Because if that's the case, I'm going to be tilted. Oh shit. I just overwrote the other file. Oh my god, I'm fucking boosted. Uh F in the chat. Oh, that's fine. Just do this. And then we gotta edit this file to get rid of all the actually useful stuff. Uh, yeah, and do this again. It's not gonna work. Okay. Are you fucking serious? Now it discovers it. Oh my god. So it doesn't recurse after all. Right, if you delete this. I can't believe this, man. Are you serious? Ah. Uh. Damn. Okay, so I guess we're going to rethink the directory structure. We may as well move this secrets folder under Kubernetes then. Whoops. <laughs> and then what we have to do is... I'm thinking what we do is just like... <sighs> yeah, something like this. Mm. Uh, let's see, what's the... Okay, something like this. OCF Kubernetes deploy secret star.yaml.erb and then that's the template we use. Right, so in here we write this to Yeah, Cooper C operated under uh, assumption that uh, all the stuff in uh, Kubernetes was to be recursed. But, yeah, uh, I, I thought that the Kubernetes deploy script recursively went through the entire Kubernetes directory, but apparently it only looks at the top level, which is fucking dumb, but whatever. Kubernetes deploy secret dot format name. Oh shit, wait. Oh fuck. Uh... <laughs> God, I hate. Okay, okay. All right, this is fine. It's kind of terrible, but it's fine. This looks disgusting. But I don't really know what else to do. La Mac. I'd love to see the refactor. Ah, okay. Dude, there's like smoky smell coming in my window. It's kind of nice, actually. Like, not bad smoke, like wood smoke. You know? Okay. And then. Gen secrets der. This is just okay. So this this refactor we did 
We're just gonna change this back. Get Kubernetes there. No their name. Kubernetes. Get get top level dir. Get okay, so this is Kubernetes there. Uh actually we don't even need this anymore. We're not deleting anything either. Actually we don't even need this as an argument to this function. Because it's always gonna be this. Okay. Cool. Uh we get rid of all this nonsense about removing and recreating this this is the secret stir is no longer this it's get kubernetes stir uh stop path dot join this and then secrets Okay, and then down here, this is get Kubernetes there. Okay. All right, let's see if this works. It didn't work. Seems like it didn't find the files. So, oh, this is fucked up. Okay. Oh. Okay. Secret template there. Secrets, that should be fine. Hmm. Kubernetes secrets synapse, right? Like this should be, hmm. Hmm. Typo. Okay, um, hmm. not sure what the bug is here. Let's, uh, some nice printf debugging. Okay. Oh, fuck. Wait, I'm using the wrong one. I'm literally just boosted. Oh, no. Te <laughs> Did someone catch this? No. SMH, if you're running in 3.8, you could just use your breakpoint. Yeah. Okay. Oh. I hope the test Mastodon. Oh, my God. I don't know what this is, but I'm just going to delete it because, well. <laughs> I'm this sorry. is from when I was yeah. working on Ceph or something. Okay, wait, it's it's fine. But also, yeah. bruh. Okay, well, I, I'm going to, well, I may as well leave this in. I think it'll work, but. Get, get Kubernetes there is not defined. What line is this? 166. Hmm. Kubernetes. Okay. There we fucking go. There we go. 
Okay. Did we do it? I think we did it. Uh, yeah, let me just check some stuff. Okay. Delete that. Uh, yeah, let's, let's try this. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, let me, let me get rid of the print statements. I guess full five seconds will. Yeah. Sorry for that. Okay, so secret deployed successfully. The service isn't gonna work because there's nothing to actually on the for the there's nothing that will actually work for the other end of the service. Um, that's fine, but we should be able to see the Kubernetes, the, uh, let's see, what do I call it? What's the, uh, what, Cooper C test? Test Cooper C? Test Cooper C. Uh, get secret. Okay, so here we have this. Um, describe secret synapse. Okay, I'm sure this actually worked as intended. Uh, uh, Kubernetes shows secret in plain text. By default, if you just try and view the secret, it'll show it in base64, which you can decode, but it's just annoying. Uh, Uh, whatever. Oh, apparently not. Oh my god! Last Wait, of oh, it... that's the last of my configuration. Okay, so this. Is presumably home server two dot yaml. <laughs> Wait, yeah. that's so that's so hold on. We need a screenshot right here. Okay, base sixty four. Okay, cat home server two dot yaml base sixty four dash d home server 2.yaml okay fuck you mean oh no valid what's invalid about it Ugh. the fuck What? What the fuck? Something seems very wrong here. Is this not just base64? This actually is kind of sus for base64 because there aren't any like slashes or equals. Which there should be, I think. I think it's YAML that has base64 values. Right, right, right. But I'm pretty sure this is the base64 value. Oh. Right, because here's the here's the YAML part of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, home server oh, that. Oh, and then I just copied this. Yeah. So like, you know, this file starts mm -hmm. with this and then ends with this. I don't know, man. Wait, what are you trying to copy from? Supernova to your computer? 
Wait, it what? Oh, did it work? Oh shit! I don't think it worked. I don't think it worked. Because it says invalid input here. Maybe it gets cut off here. Uh, I think it probably just didn't copy the whole thing. Oh yeah, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't copy the whole thing. All right. Instead of trying to do this on my laptop, we're just gonna do this. Uh, We'll go uh, delete this, delete all this, and go to the next line and delete until the end of the file. Okay. Yeah, so that should be it. Okay. seem to work. Oh, right. Oh, and would you, you look it? at that? Would you look at that? The the secrets injected right in there. Wow. Wow. Oh, check check if the whole file's there. I guess. Uh, the whole file does seem to be there. Here, I'll run a diff. Um against the untemplated version, which should be in Kubernetes secrets home server, oh, synapse home server dot every. Yeah, so that's the only diff. All right. Okay. Uh, we accomplished our goal. Um, Yay, pod champ. Pod champ. Pod champ in the chat. Okay, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and work on committing this now and trying to figure out whether or not I need to refactor anything. Uh, let me run tests. Um, there we go. Auto, pep, auto pep 8 and flake 8, stepping it up. Yeah, reload that file. Hopefully it fixed some of my garbage indentation nonsense. It didn't. Okay, this still looks terrible. You know what, I'm just gonna do this. It's fine. It's fine. I can feel my soul leaving my body, but it's fine. This is worse, is it though? Oh, I still have a shootle. I feel like this is, I feel like this is at least slightly better. I mean, except for this, which is just a mistake. The old, the one before was just like really fucking verbose. I don't know. I wouldn't feel at all bad about this if I didn't have to have the W um, parameter on line 64, but oh my god, wait, you converted to black? I thought I thought you were like ant. Never mind. Oh, you just been using it. I see. I wonder what black would do here, but I don't really care. I think this is fine. I'm just going to stick with this. Okay, test pass. Uh, let's get to committing. This is just an indentation change, but I think it's better. Honestly, this thing, the like one, two, three, four, and then the one indent here, kind of terrible. 
this honestly looks clean as fuck. I don't know why we didn't do this already, but this is this is kind of an unrelated change, but whatever. It's fine. No, no, no. It's in, there's no actual test here. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not that I'm not that much of a of a tryhard. No, no, the tests just uh, run a linter. So, uh, oh, yeah, no, I don't. Pog. It's just a script. So, Wait, I ain't tasting, Bernard just I ain't like come in <laughs> and then just say pog and leave. It does seem so. <laughs> pog. You weren't pog. a tryhard. You didn't say test driven development yet. Yeah, fuck test driven development. I mean, I'm sure it's good for some things, but I'm. Yeah, I don't know. It's good to say during an interview. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. I don't know why YAML is set off here, but that seems wrong. I am actually surprised the linter didn't complain about that. Wait, it reordered it. Okay. I what? Ethan, can you explain this? Why does it want YAML to be... So, oh, these are all built into Python, but YAML is actually a separate, an external library. Is that it? Okay, gotcha. All right. Our spacing is kind of jank here. Okay, let's see. Beautiful. Oh, wait, was everything three before? Maybe everything was three before. Fuck. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, we need that. Yep, this looks fine. And this, hmm. clean this up a little bit. Like this, we can. Yeah, I'm not going to factor this out. Like, this isn't that bad. It just looks bad because it's deeply nested because there were like two if statements, but it's not actually that complex. It's just iterating through. It's just like two nested loops because. No, it's not even two nested loops. It's one loop. And then just two checks on either side. It should be two, but I guess three is okay. Wait, what? Oh, new lines between functions? Yeah, yeah I think it was... the convention is two, but like three is fine. Yeah, I this file was already using three, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Oh, yeah, it's fine. As long as your linter doesn't complain. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be complaining, so... There you go. Oh, let's just double check again. Oh. Well, maybe it maybe it is complaining. I don't know what it's complaining about now, though. I managed to somehow break the magic. But I'll be modified by this hook. Oh, <laughs> wait, no, it added a new line. It wants three. Interesting. Maybe I should just move this stuff to the top. That would probably make more sense. It feels like it should be right above this function, maybe, but at the same time, they are like static. Yeah. I'll just do that. That's fine. Yeah, okay, that passes. Cool. Nice. Now, the best part. Of doing anything, writing the commit message. Well, I want to see this uh, magic. Two nested loops. I want to make sure to bring down the big O complexity interview minus points. <laughs> yeah. Damn. 
Dang. Interviews really be like that, huh? Literal garbage. Okay. Um, OCF Kubernetes deploy look for secret. Yeah, let's see, create Kubernetes secrets from templates. L templates set. Look for files. That match secret files like Kubernetes secrets, secret name, and create. Corresponding Kubernetes Kubernetes secrets with containing these files. As value pairs. This allows us to template files to include injected secrets and I should also run this on something that already exists just to make sure that it doesn't break when there isn't a secrets directory, I guess. I mean, I guess I can just anyway. So I'll just inject uh, to to inject secrets and then mount these secrets as the Kubernetes secret resource as a volume into a container. Okay. That's really hard to describe what this does because the word secret uh, means like both the actual secret itself and a Kubernetes secret resource, which is like very different things, uh, which is kind of confusing. But uh, okay, so the last thing I want to do here is Kubernetes. If we delete this and we delete this, and then we run this again. There should be no secret. And it should work. Okay, it works. I'm fairly confident this is, that this works then. Okay, cool. Time to open the GitHub PR. Whoops. files. Let's go. I hate how it includes the line breaks from your extended commit message, but it doesn't, but then like GitHub doesn't auto wrap. Like it doesn't, it's like different from Markdown and that it respects the new lines, but yeah. Fixes. Uh, what was the issue number? Forfeit one forty-five. One forty-five. Uh, oh, is this a typo? Oh well.
wants to review this? Open reviews to the public, you coward. Uh, so the way it works on GitHub is you have to have write access to the repository in order to review. Well, you have to have write access to the repository in order to, for your review to have any actual impact for it to like show as green or red or anything like that. But anyone on the internet can like, as long as you can see the repository, you can review it. Just won't have any sort of impact, if that makes sense. Thanks, iPhone fan. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed it um, a little bit. Um, yeah, it turns out programming in Python is just Googling things repeatedly. But I guess that's most programming, so. Uh, yeah. Okay. I guess no one wants to review this. Here, did you write this script initially? Who wrote this? I think you're left. Yeah, you did. Rip. Yes. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> oh wait, that was the script. This is the original copy of the script. This is more than a year ago. <laughs> Damn, I didn't wow. know that that was ever like that. That's funny. Okay, so who actually wrote the script that we would consider? Okay, yeah, it was all D Kessler. Well, okay, yeah. I think some people are smoking weed outside my apartment. It's a less pleasant smoke than the, um, Uh, and the like more woody smelling one. Forgot what weed smells like. Dang, you've been home that long. Okay, right, well I'll tag Decas here and Fida, I guess, since he's also worked with this. We'll see. Anyway, oh yeah, uh, chat here if you want the link um, to this. Um, yeah. What's up? Dang, still, still a fair number of people here. I'm glad you all stuck around to the end. Uh, I hope it was somewhat enjoyable. Um... Yeah. Oh, thanks, Kimo. Um, I think that's about it. I'm going to probably leave it to KMO to um, update Matrix to actually use this, especially since it is also dependent on the stuff that uh, is in progress right now at the bridge. I don't want to ask KMO, like, do you understand? how this works, like how you would use this. Uh, maybe maybe review over it one more time, just for the full set home. OK, yeah, sure. Because uh, what I did is like I. Uh... Right, OK. Let me just here. What I'll do is I'll. Yeah. Okay, so here, I'm just gonna delete all of these actually. Well, I'll keep this. I'm gonna delete all of these. Uh... Okay, 
So I'm clean matrix here. I've added this get ignore, but that's fine. Um, so are you following along so far? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm listening, yeah. Oh shit, I actually, uh, wait, did I run out of disk space while recording this? It oh. says disk full in approximately, oh, that looks like an overflow. Disk full in approximately negative 596,523 hours. Seems, seems a little wrong. Um, okay, cool. So basically, first thing we're going to do, update the Docker file. Don't copy this over. Actually, if we're not copying this over, we don't even need a Docker file. Um, well, for, you can remove the Docker file here and just tell it to use Synapse latest um, in the Kubernetes YAML, if that makes sense. I'll, okay. just, I'll just go ahead and do this, actually. Um, because the only thing we were doing in the Docker file was adding that. So, okay. So then, here's what we're going to do here. I'm going to delete the service and the ingress just so that, and the PVC, um, just so that it doesn't accidentally fuck anything up in the cluster, actually. Um, and yeah, since the PVC is gone, we can get rid of this. Um, but instead, let's see this volume mount, volume from secret Kubernetes. I don't remember exactly how to do this, but there's a, you can basically mount the secret in as a volume. Okay. Volume mounts name on, uh, the, home okay wait volume mounts name oh my god this is the indentation is not consistent fuck yaml name volume i don't know Con config home server config uh oh my god dude we gotta fix this it's so annoying Every time you try and write YAML, just thinks it knows better than you. Okay, mount path. Um, home, home server config. Maybe you can use Etsy matrix here, but I don't want to clobber anything else that might be in that directory. That's why I didn't do that. Um, and then read only true. So I'm just copying this like right off of Kubernetes docs. And then here we need to update this to say on server config. And then here's where we define the actual volume that we mount up there. And then instead of from the persistent volume claim, we're going to, oops, use this uh, from secret. And then here, secret name synapse. Or, well, here, home server config. I'll call it. I'll call the secret home server config so you can get an idea of where this is used. Or let's call this synapse config. Okay, going along so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so you've edited the you know the deployment to incorporate the secret. Uh, you sort of mount it, mm -hmm. uh, mount the secret um, into into a directory. Uh, so what what other files would you create? So the only other thing we need to do, well, I guess two things we need to do is. Uh, move the home server.yaml into, well, so first we need to actually make the directories secrets and then the name of the secret, which in our case we decided to call it synapse, what, what, what did we call it? Uh, synapse config. config. So, so this is the uh, name of the secret. Or oh, okay. the name and of then, the Kubernetes what, secret resource. So the same thing we put under secret name. Okay, and then whatever is inside, you just mount that. Yeah, everything inside basically gets mounted um, into that directory. So like, uh, and those those inside can be templates as well, right? Or they have to be templates. They have to be templates. Okay. 
at least how it currently is they have to be templates although maybe maybe we could change that i don't know okay um So so you move the home server dot yaml right. to dot erb. Okay. So now the home server dot yaml is in here. You can edit this and then factor out the secrets. Okay. So um you know something like this registration shared secret okay oh my god why does it do this uh <laughs> all right so okay uh i won't do all i'll just do two here because i'm lazy um what's nope not that one no where is it Okay, whatever. I swear I know how to use Vim, guys. Fuck. <laughs> okay. So then, let's see. So we need a value for this. Oops. Need a value for that, and we need a value for this. Okay. Okay, so that's all we need to do to this file. So you can see where this is and what we changed. Right, yeah, now the yeah, only so thing is, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, 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 I'm just uh, recapping. So you're templating out this uh, home server file, putting variables for the secrets. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so where would you fill those variables? Right, so in this case, I'm going to, um, just create a file called secrets.yaml. Uh, you know, so it's just, this is just YAML, right? Um, now in production, this is actually in the public private share. So uh, you can show us that, right? No, but well, actually, yeah, maybe I can. Hold on. All right. let, me, let me check. Dangerous territory. Let's go. I think it might not even exist yet. So, yeah. So there isn't even one for Matrix yet, right? Whoops. Yeah. So you know, really, you would put it in this file, right? And then this file gets automatically detected as the secrets as the correct secrets file when you run OCF Kubernetes deploy. Um, yeah, and then the only other thing you might want to do is here, like since we're using the upstream image, just do you know, a thing to build. I don't think we actually use this right now, but maybe we should. I think we do. Um, it, it's passed. It was it was passed into, but you just delete it. Oh, okay. Uh, let's look at this really quick. Oops. Wait, I'm in the right directory, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, cool. Because we override this, basically. Right. Well, instead of doing that, we can just do... We can just define this in here. We only do this when we're not building an image, which is actually pretty rare. So, um, but, you know, matrix.org synapse. And whatever the whoops, not that. Whatever the. So. so how would you specify like the version variable? Like where does that get defined? I would just do it like this. To be completely honest. 
Oh, just really like encode it like directly. Yeah. Damn. Okay, that's like, fair. <laughs> honestly, this is if you know. Of course, you may still need some of this stuff because other images, like the app service IRC image, you might need to copy some config in there that isn't mounted directly in. I don't know. My point is just yeah. like having a Docker file that does nothing doesn't make a lot of sense. So in that case, we can just sort of <laughs> skip all that stuff and do it like this. Yeah, yeah, um, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Yeah, and this should be pretty much everything. I can push this to like a branch if that would be helpful. Uh, well... Uh, IRC and Federation, that branch is already like. Yeah, no, I just mean lot. like yeah. so that you have the changes that I just did as the demo, uh, as a reference. I could push that okay. out some other branch. Yeah, that would be helpful. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for doing all this. This is very helpful to watch, actually. I am glad. This is kind of fun. Uh, of course, all of this stuff is untested, so I mean, like, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, I'm not going to commit the rest of this, but, well, actually, I don't even want to commit all of that. Oh, geez, uh, this is, okay. You've also convinced me to use UMAPs. <laughs> Yeah, Emacs is tight. Not that my goal was to convince you to use it, but you know, it is tight. What can I say? Okay. And of course this won't actually work until you, uh, until my PR is merged, but yeah. Okay, I posted to the branch demo secrets. And yeah, sounds good. I'm going to probably call it a night now. I'm not going to own a PR or anything because, um, well, yeah. You can open a WP, WIP PR if you, uh, you know, want to for some reason, but I don't think there's really a need. Um, cool, good stuff. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, I have a bunch of, I have like a few streams. <laughs> Wait a sec. Yeah, I have a few streams on my hard drive too. The bot, like the VODs probably are expiring soon. Um, so I don't know, I don't know if we ever decided like how those should get uploaded to YouTube or anything, but I hopefully we'll do that at some point either to my account or to the OCF account um, uh, so that so that there's a more permanent record past the VODs, uh, just as an FYI. But yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, yeah. Good night, everyone. <laughs>